Hey guys, what's up? I'm Jess and welcome back to Roots and Refuge Farm. I'm here in my wintry and bare garden, but it's very exciting because now is the time of year that I start sowing a lot of things for um, the late winter and early spring crops. Lots of root vegetables, peas, um, several things that are just gonna be direct sown like lettuces and kales. And the other day I was out here sowing some seeds and I thought, you know, it would be really nice if I had something to help me with this. Now let's take these radish seeds for instance. These seeds are quite small and with a lot of things, Sowing and spacing is really important. Um, as far as things like radishes, spacing them out so that they can all form equally nice sized roots and not be in competition with one another for resources is a very important thing. And I've taken a lot of approaches. Like I've done trenches before and just kind of sprinkled them along. Uh, things like radishes and carrots and lettuces and then I go in and thin them out as they come up. And that's one way to do it. But what I really, really like to do to the best of my ability is to do the spacing properly from the beginning. Um, I just love it when my sprouts come up and they're pretty evenly spaced and I don't have to do a lot of thinning. It just removes one step from the process for me. I used to have this little tool and it was essentially like a ruler that had holes in it every inch and that was nice. It really kind of helped me to evenly space my holes when I was planting things and to have a general idea whenever I was trying to plant beans six inches apart to make sure that I was getting that right. But um, um, it was still a little bit piddly. It was kind of tedious just having one little ruler and usually I'm planting large sections in my raised bed. It helped, but it wasn't exactly what I wanted, what I was looking for. Now typically what I do is plant in blocks. I can't show you this right now because it's February. There's not much planted. However, what I'll do, in, for instance, is I'll either go right down the middle and I'll plant this two foot side with um, you know, radishes for a while and then peppers or whatever it's going to be, or I'll plant a cross. And so this whole thing will be kale and then this whole section will be lettuce. Because when you read seed packages, a lot of times you'll see things like row spacing and essentially that is kind of derived from a gardening method where you need to get equipment up and down the rows and so row spacing isn't quite as relevant for raised beds since basically we're creating a space that we can reach from both sides and so I fill my entire bed and I just give each plant enough space all the way around it for uh, what it's going to need when it's full grown. What I got to thinking about the other day was how nice it would be to have something that I could come and set down with holes in it and I could just very simply poke all of my holes and then drop a seed into each one of them and they would all be correctly spaced. And this is where Sweet Maya comes in. I went to him and explained what I was imagining and said, hey, could you help me make this a reality? And of course, he was more than willing to do that. So here we have the, the materials and we're gonna share our idea with you guys today in making this seed spacer. How large you make something like this would probably be pretty dependent on your needs. Um, you might not need something that's going to be quite this big if you're not planting a garden quite as large as ours. Uh, this piece of wood is a three quarter inch thick piece of birch that's 24 inches by 48 inches. And my thought with this was that usually whenever I'm planting like a block of something, a certain kind of green bean or a certain kind of beet, I usually plant about a two by four foot block uh, in one direction or another. This is about how much space I'll use for something. Now the other thought with this is for me that when we do our in-ground gardening I don't necessarily have to plant the entire thing. I can place half of this uh, where I want it and use it to space my holes. It's just because I lay this down doesn't mean I have to plant every hole on it. I can use part of it and it's still going to work the same. But it might be a benefit to cut this in half and somebody make something a little thinner and longer for if you were more into planting rows or something like that. So the general idea is this. We've got this board and like I said, ours is two by four feet. You could do this any size and apply this, this idea to any size, whatever you needed for your garden. We've got these handles that are gonna go on the ends here. 
that basically one on each end will make this easy to pick up and place where we want to put it in the garden beds to sow our seeds. And we're going to be taking, what's this thing called again? It's called a triangle, right? I mean, it is in the mathematical sense. <laughs> That's not what they call it in the construction sense. What is it called? Carpenter square? That makes no sense. I've never understood that. I understand it makes things square, but why are you going to get a triangle and call it a square? <laughs> so we're going to take this and we're just going to... <laughs> How can you just say, we're just going to take this thing. <laughs> I will not call it a square because it's shaped like a triangle. We're going to put marks on our board every two inches. Now, every one inch may be useful but for the most part everything that I plant is about is either two inches four inches or six inches apart that's kind of my general rule I guess for some radishes and carrots you could go closer than that but I just feel like two inches is going to be plenty enough space for us so we're going to do every two inches we're going to drill a hole uh, large enough for a pea or like a green bean. Now I know that there are some seeds that are larger than that, like lima beans. I can think of a few seeds that are larger than that. But for me, um, I'm not gonna cater this to the exception. Most everything that I'm planting is gonna be green bean or pea size or smaller. All right, so we're gonna make this as easy as possible. This is called a T-square. You don't necessarily need this, but this is gonna make what we're doing with the amount of holes we have to drill go a lot faster. Okay, so on this, that gives me one inch off the edge. This is two inches wide, so I can actually trace the second line straight on the other side. <laughs> All right, so we have our lines drawn going this way. Now we just have to turn it and go crossways, and we'll know where we need to drill our holes. Are you telling me that now you're abandoning the speed square triangle to use the T thing? T square. <laughs> So the whole the whole they really try they really try and reiterate in carpentry keeping things square. There's <laughs> well, carpenter I, squares. I, there's I understand squares, that it's very important. Speed squares, <laughs> square squares. All right, so we got the grid drawn here uh, with space on both ends to put the handle. So obviously there's not going to be any holes on that. But everywhere else here that these lines cross, Jeremiah is going to drill a hole. So we're going to do a half inch bit and draw, a, drill a hole in each place here. So there'll be every two inches all the way across this thing. There's going to be a lot of drilling. So normally when I'm sowing seeds, I just grab a marker or a stick or just something else. I use my finger a lot of the times. And that's fine and you can typically get a guesstimated depth of what you need to sow uh, the seeds. But I was thinking about the fact that we're going to be uh, setting this piece of, of wood, the seed spacing board, on top of the soil and just poking a pin or something through to poke the holes, it might be kind of hard to know exactly how deep you're getting those. And it would be a bummer to go through all of this to accidentally sow my seeds too deep and then uh, not be able to have enough energy when they sprout to get to the soil surface. So what I thought was um, to kind of make a little poker with a dowel rod. So this is a 3 8 dowel rod. I wanna say he picked this up for like 20 cents at the store whenever he grabbed that piece of lumber and what I'm gonna do here is just go ahead and measure um, three quarters of an inch to begin with and that's where I'm gonna make like my first mark that's just to get through the depth of my board and from there I'm gonna go ahead and do one mark at at an a quarter of an inch um, I'm gonna do one mark at a half an inch and then I'm gonna do one mark at an inch now those are pretty good guesstimated depths that whenever I go through and start poking my holes, I know how deep to press this thing to get about the depth that I want. Again, it doesn't have to be exact, but uh, I don't want to get carried away and start poking holes that are an inch and an inch and a half deep without realizing it and then drop something like a carrot or a radish seed in because that just won't work. The other thing is that this dowel rod, um, there's enough space here for me to actually cut this. I don't need it to be anywhere near this long, but I could cut this into at least thirds, maybe fourths, and end up with multiple little planting poker thingies. <laughs> If you notice, like in all plywood, especially finished plywood, the 
you know, plywood is essentially sheets of wood glued together. That's what make plywood. So whenever you're drilling through stuff, no matter what drill bit you're really using, um, you'll see like how some of the top panels start to chip off. Like I did that or let it happen on purpose um, because our style is more of like this like rugged rustic look. And so by the time I'm done staining it and the stain gets in those cracks and stuff, it's gonna make it really feel like our style. If you did not want that rustic look, you could sandwich this between two other scrap pieces of plywood that you didn't care about. That way when you drilled the hole, the top sheet um, would stay intact. It would not flake off like that. And then you'd have a more polished look. You can finish this project and customize it however you want. Now, today we're gonna give this thing a test run while it's still naked, just for the sake of doing this video. However, as soon as we're done with this, we're actually going to stain this and varnish it because this is gonna be coming in contact with soil. There's gonna be moisture involved and we wanna keep this uh, in good shape as long as possible. So a clear coat's gonna help with that. But you could uh, paint it or spray paint it or whatever you wanted to do to finish it out. But I do think that um, putting some clear coat on it is probably your best bet. Because Maya likes to think of details, he got little clips to go in here and hold that pokey thing. <laughs> and kind of flatten my soil out with it. Okay, George. All right, now I'm gonna plant these sparkler white tip radishes and just drop one seed per hole. and see what it looks like. There you go. Take that. All right, looks pretty good. I've got seeds in each of these holes, and now what I'm gonna do is just rub my hand across it and close them up. Thank you very much for your help, little sweet Maya. Teamwork. Makes the dream work. Thank you guys for hanging out with me today. I'm sure you don't wanna do like one of those like where we like jump up at the same time and like... Uh, better not. Like, bing! <laughs> no, on. let's not do that. <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with us today. If you decide to make some variation of this seeds board, we would love to see it. Uh, post a picture, tag us in it, uh, let us know. I'm considering about making some for the shindig to sell. I don't know yet. I don't know, maybe. That, that was a lot of holes to drill. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you guys for hanging out with us. We bless you, until next time.